Okay, good morning everyone. Um, there are not so many people yet, um, but anyway, I think we're going to start. Um, so first of all, this is a very new um, webinar in our Dynamo Express series. And as usual, um, if you have questions, um, feel free to post the questions in the chat and we're going to try to answer them afterwards. And today's webinar is a little bit different than what we usually do. So usually we do a webinar about some technical content strongly related to LS Dyna and uh, features, um, new features, extension of features, give you an insight into methods and so on. But this time, um, this is more like um, introducing you a new product um, from Dynamo related to LS Dyna. And the product we're going to talk about today is Dyna Extend. Ah, and by the way, my name is Mike Schenke from Dynamo, and this presentation was done in cooperation with Christian Engfer from T Systems, and also the T System is strongly related um, in this Dyna Extend product. So, what is Dyna Extend? And basically, um, it's summed up in the title already. So, flexible and short-term LS Dyna software and hardware lease. And what it does, what it means exactly, um, we take a look now. So, first of all, what is Dyna Extend? Um, so the idea was, um, because usually we get a lot of um, requests from customers that they have some peaks and performance needs um, related to some projects. So suddenly maybe you need a month of lo a lot of uh, hardware resources for computing something. And so we came up with the idea, okay, why not to provide this to our customers and in particular somehow uh, incorporating not only LS Dyna licensing, but also the hardware lease as well itself. So it means you, with Dyna Extend, you can book additional licenses to LS Dyna on the one hand, and at the same time, you also book a hardware where your LS Dyna simulation is running on. Yeah, And this, the idea was to somehow compensate <coughs> um, for simulation peaks, uh, which may happen. So you have your base capacity for, for simulations and then you have some projects. Maybe you even have a server loss. Yeah, you have some breakdown of servers. You cannot run as simulations as much as you can, as you need. And then maybe on a short term, you need to somehow increase um, the, uh, the simulation capabilities in your company. And this is what exactly what LS Dyna, uh, LS Dyna Extend is for. Yeah, so peak in simulation demands, short-term projects, or even maybe in the worst case, a hardware failure. Yeah, and then this hardware failure needs to be compensated in some way. And <clears throat> Dyna Extend is can be combined in general with any other with any cloud computing service. And <clears throat> we have a strong cooperation with T Systems, and then again they have a cooperation with the High Performance Computing Center in Stuttgart, which is the HPCC, and with that cooperation, you are able to compute on one of the fastest computers you have available right now, which is the Hawk. And yeah, this is located in the HRS and the HPC center or H HLRS center in Stuttgart. I think it's fairly new. I'm, I'm not sure when it was installed. What's a fairly new machine? Um, it's from HPE, yeah. uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprises. It's, it's composed of Adam, AMD, Epic CPUs. We have, it has about like 5,632 5, nodes, where each node has 128 cores. And we also have some uh, NVIDIA GPU computing power, which is 192. Um, <clears throat> we have a lot of memory and also a lot of disk space, of course. Yeah, and I think the machine, yeah, I checked it recently, was ranked 24 in the worldwide top 100 a top 500 list for fastest computer. Um, recent benchmarks showed a pretty much good um, parallel scalability, scalability with LS Dyna. So it means that you can run really, really performant um, simulations using LS Dyna on this machine. So I think this is a pretty good um, approach when you need to compensate for simulation demands yeah, uh, in your company. Okay, so the question now is, um, how do you access and book um, the, the Dyna Extend? So right now um, we have an independent software and hardware lease. Yeah, so you have to basically approach two companies. You have to approach Dynamo for um, the hardware, uh, for the software, and you need some kind of vendor which provides you the hardware lease or the computing power or the hardware computing. Yeah, um, we're trying to work on to make it all in once. So that means you just approach Dynamo and then you get the whole package uh, provided by Dynamo, but this is not yet ready. 
Yeah. So you do get a license from, from Dynamo. You have a machine lease from the hardware provider. You can choose whatever you want. Yeah. Um, and this um, QT system, go com compute and so on. But also, like I said, we have a strong relationship with T systems right now. And here, uh, PLM the cloud is the system. Um, yeah, and through the PLM cloud of T systems, you have access to the Hawk machine. Yeah. And there are different ways how to do it. And I'm pretty sure maybe it's still similar to with other um, hardware providers, but I'm, later on, I'm going to show you how this works with the PLM cloud in particular. So um, a few features related to the Dyna extent. Um, yeah, you can book it on a monthly basis. That means like you can decide, okay, I just need some more computing power for a month. Then you book it for a month. Yeah, you can extend it by another month and you can book it pretty on short notice. Yeah, that means like um, two weeks later or two weeks in advance or two, one week in advance, you can say, okay, I need a hardware, I need a Dyna extend, and you can do it. So it's pretty much, or this is what we're aiming for. Yeah. Um, since the product is fairly new at the moment, it might not be as streamlined as we want to have it, but um, we are aiming to be as streamlined as possible and fast as possible with the booking. Yeah. So if you're interested, um, you can go to our webpage. Um, I will post the, the PDFs later on also online. The video will be also posted online on YouTube. And also then you can click on the link in the PDF and follow the guides yeah, how to book it. Um, for the T-Systems PLM Cloud, you can call, contact uh, Mr. Hierholz from T-Systems and he is getting the contract ready. Yeah. But like I said, um, hopefully we're aiming for, we majored it to have like one station which you have to approach in particular Dynamo for the whole booking of hardware and software. Okay, <clears throat> here's an example how the whole thing is done in, um, um, in the T-Systems, the PLM cloud. So basically, if you um, have booked your Dyna X10 and you have incorporated uh, T-Systems as a hardware uh, for the hardware lease, um, this is a sketch how it works inside of the T-Systems. And by the way, also T-Systems does have this TISEX, TISEX um, approval. Yeah, that means um, this TISEX is an... Uh, um, is a certification which uh, measures or tests the data security. Uh, so that means that TSEX is pretty much a secure system and this is approved by the automotive industry. So that means you can run your crash simulation through PLM Cloud and Dynax Tent on the Hawk machine and it's all proof based on the TSEX um, certification. Okay, <clears throat> so this is how basically how it looks like. Um, this is the PLM Cloud. Yeah. So here inside the PLM cloud, you have the sort of the T systems management hardware, which is then connecting to the Hawk at the HPC center in Stuttgart. And these are your possibilities to access um, the PLM cloud. Yeah, you can go through a virtual desktop infrastructure. So a virtual desktop basically connect to the cloud. Uh, you can use a web submit. Yeah, so um, you're going through, a, through your browser or and probably this is the most convenient solution I think so far. Um, it's a drag and drop solution. That means on your local machine, your IT install the folder or set up a folder where you, in the outbox, you put all your jobs you want to run on the, on the Hawk machine. Yeah. And then the grunt job is synchronizing the jobs, sending them to the Hawk, running the jobs, and then writing the results back to your inbox. So basically for you, it's just placing all your simulations or your simulation decks inside the outbox folder and then maybe on the next day yeah or how long it may take you get the results back and then you can take a look on the look at the results right away yeah um this is how it works licensing wise um you have a couple of solution uh, possibilities you can either go e-licensing custom license server so you can access your own license server if you already have licenses available or you can use the cloud license server from from inside the PLM cloud. But let's take a look a little bit further uh, into the different steps and then we see. Okay, um, so here for you, how to access the T-Systems PLM cloud. Like I said before, it's TSEX approved. Yeah, so it's, um, it's secure data-wise, so you can run your jobs. If you're a service provider for some OEM, so to say, yeah, you're able to book the Dyna extent, yeah, and you're still conforming with any data security regulations. So the first option I said before is the so-called virtual desktop infrastructure, VDE, 
which is basically a virtual desktop. So it means you're connecting to the hardware, um, you open your graphical user interface, and then you just work on the cloud computer as it would work on your local machine. And pretty much in many companies, it's they are going this approach. You know, so many employees um, accessing their workstation or the computer they work on through the virtual desktop infrastructure. So it's commonly and it's becoming more and more um, 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 more and more common um, in the engineering space you know, to work with this virtual desktop infrastructure. The sec second step or second solution would be well, uh, the sub web submit. So you just when go through your browser, you um, submit a job, you redrive the data once the job is done. You can check the jobs uh, on your status. Or on the last one, I said it already, is a drag and drop solution. Probably, and probably this is the most convenient solution so far, where your outbox files contain your decks to be run on the hardware, and the inbox contains the results, which you can check and check for. What they all have in common is <clears throat> whether if you go over this option, this option, or this option, all um, in any case, you can use the web uh, submit or the, not the web submit, the, the web interface to check the status of your job. Yeah. So you can always, even if you use a drag and drop solution with your user ID, you can go to the web formula, uh, to the web form. Yeah. You type in your username and then can you check what's the status of my job? Is it submitted? Is it queued? And what's the status of your job? Yeah. You can do it with all the solutions. So this is pretty convenient. So the tracking of your job can be done in any case whether you choose option one, two, and three, and can be done through the web. I think this is also pretty convenient. Okay, um, regarding the licenses, also here, you have different jobs, uh, different offer build possibilities inside the TC, T Systems PLM cloud. Um, so basically the first one is the um, e-licensing. Yeah, so that means, but well, this depends on the manufacturer of the software and some of the manufacturers, they have a license, a public license server running somewhere and you just need the URL and then you access the license server and you then this open license server is checking, okay, if this ID is able or somehow has booked licenses and is somehow allowed to redrive some licenses. The next one is you have your own license server running. Yeah, this will be then connected to the PLM cloud via VPN hardware. And of course, if you're into this LS Diner licensing, for instance, yeah, you have to make sure that the IP range of the VPN has to match the, the IP range of the LS Diner license. But there's a good news because just recently LS Ansys changed the, the, the license type or the way the license are issues. Before it was pretty much restrictive on the IP range from which you can access the license server, but now they changed it so that is pretty much bigger licenses are fairly open so that can any um, IPA can access the um, IP can access to the license server. Yeah. Um, Cloud licensing server, yeah, it means that the cloud the license server is running inside of the PLM cloud. So basically, here you're referring to the um, licenses which have been bought by T Systems or PLM cloud inside of T Systems. Yeah. So these are the, the three ways, and I think this one here, option number two, is the most common one. Yeah. That you are running as a company, you're running your own license server and then you're just retrieving your license server from your own um, machine using a VPN tunnel. Um, yeah. Okay. So with that being said, um, let's get a little bit more practical. So like I said before, you have these three options, yeah, how to exit it. Yeah, you can exit it by virtual desktop interface, web submit and track and drop. Um, the method I'm focusing now is here on the web submit because with this I can also show you a little bit um, how this works. And yeah, so what do we need to have? Yeah, so first of all, of course, you need to have an input deck, right? So what I usually do is um, you take your input deck, you put it all, you have some your main file here, and then you have all your other include files. Yeah, you can org organize it as you want. Yeah, um, you can make, you build sub subfolders, you can have it all in one directory, but in any case, you need to have a main file which you want to run. And always is a good idea to just make this an archive, you just zip that all together, yeah, you have an archive. This is the first thing you need, uh, of course, you need to have an input deck as an archive, is the best way. 
And secondly, you need a so-called um, cluster control uh, control file. Yeah, this is this job control file dot control. Yeah, so this is the second file you need. You need an archive, and you need this file. And um, I don't want to go into the decks because this is just a fairly uh, regular ls10 input deck. But what's special is this control file, and I want to go a little bit deeper into this control file just to show you a little bit what kind of possibilities I have. Um, you can also access, you can also have the, um, the examples later on. We will also publish it online on our website together with, uh, with the PDFs. And you can download this control file as an example, but also you can also get this example. Uh, this is from Dyna examples, I think. And, but you can get the whole example, which I'm using here, just to make it easier for you to get started. Okay, so let's take a look on the job control file. Control file. Okay, um, if you open the file, um, it's a, just a regular text file and you have a bunch of options. And the example I got from T-Systems was pretty much well documented. So inside of the text file, you get a lot of, um, you get a lot of explanations. What is the parameter? So I just picked a few here. So for instance, so here, this is how it looks like. Um, so you have, for instance, um, these are comments and this is a control. Yeah, this you have mid control begin. This is where the file starts. And then you have options like, for instance, sub solver. Yeah, and then you choose a solver. Then you can choose a solver version and so on. Yeah. And then you have all these comments sub solver defines a solver. Sub solver version defines a solver version. Yeah, you can choose the input file. Here you have to define the input file for LS Dyna, so which is your master file. Um, you can select which files you want to have as an output. These files are then going to be comp compressed. Yeah, and then either you down when you use the web interface, you download this archive with all the files in it. If you have going the version with <coughs> the version with a drag and drop, you basically these are the files you are ending up in your inbox. Yeah, these are the results files. Um, you can also choose what kind of hardware you want to use. Yeah, and um, if you're connecting to the HPC, the Performance, High Performance Computing Center in Stuttgart, um, you can choose the hardware. So for instance, CN22 is the, the nickname for the Hawk machine. Um, if you want to know more, you can also here click on the link. This is the, the infrastructure, the service um, infrastructure plan or this description of key systems. And here you also find the names of the other hardware which is available. I mean, of course, the HPC Center does not have only Hawk machine. They also have older supercomputers, which you can also access. And usually if you access by your own, um, you have, uh, depending on the machine, you have different prices. Yeah. But for instance, here, um, let's talk about the Dyna Extend um, and you connect into the Hawk machine. I think you, you get a whole node and you pay a fixed price for the whole node. Yeah. And it's not charged per core hour as usual. It's, it's a fixed price per month. Yeah. You can run as many jobs as you want in, in that time. Yeah. So this is the advantage, but for the pricing, again, I want you to refer back to the homepage. <coughs> so for the moment, I think um, you pay <coughs> 5,000 euros for 128 cores and uh, for, for the licensing and then additional 2,500 euros for the machine, for a core on the machine. Yeah. So altogether you pay 7,500 euros for one month of computing of one of the fastest computers we have right now. Yeah. So this is the price. And just to give you an idea, and this 5,000 euros for the hardware, uh, for the, for the LS Dyna license is pretty cheap compared to the regular LS Dyna prices. Yeah. So I think it's a fairly good um, approach. Okay, <clears throat> then of course you can define the number, how many nodes do you want? You have one, one node, two nodes and so on. You can define a wall clock or some termination uh, wall clock time. That means if your job is running delay longer than this, um, your job will be terminated, which is probably not a good idea. But this uh, value here is pretty important for the queuing system because if you have jobs defined as really short running, so really fast jobs, yeah, they are prioritized in the queuing system so they, they get the resources earlier. If you have jobs which are running longer, they have, they have a lower priority in the queuing system. Yeah, so it's up to you to usually you do a test with your deck, you do a test run, see how long it takes, and then you can estimate the wall clock, the wall time, and then you set this as maximum to get the highest priority in the queuing system as possible. 
The good thing though is, um, I think the, the priority doesn't, is not so important anymore, and uh, not, not anymore, it's not so important at the moment as the, um, the, <clears throat> the loading of the, the Hawk machine is fairly low or because it has so many nodes, um, it's pretty easy to get it in queue even with longer running jobs. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so I think at the moment it's not so important. To, yeah, you can also set higher times, yeah, because there's still a lot of plenty of space to run jobs on the on the hawk machine. <clears throat> then of course you can also define job names, subprojects. Um, you can define how to compress the results, and also I think it's also important you can um, define which files do you want to track for the output. Yeah, usually if you run LS Dynan simulation, you have files like um, global statistics. Uh, you want to know, okay, what is the energy evolution during the simulation? Is it still a valid or reasonable energy evolution or not? Um, do I get into running just instabilities or so on? And then you can find it in here. Right? But like I said, everything, this is just an except of what all the options you have. And I think I really strongly refer you to this example. And there are a lot more examples in it. There are a lot of explanations in it. and. If you have, um, if you're missing something, just feel free to contact us or T systems to get um, further explanations or help regarding this control file. Okay, um, I try to <laughs> try to get a test account with T systems. Um, unfortunately, there was some issue with my test account. So, however, I was lucky because we did some recordings in preparation to this webinar before, and this was done with the help of Christian Engfer from T Systems. And basically, I'm trying to show you how we I, I, I walk you through the procedure uh, doing the web submit approach and how to submit a job, how we drive the jobs, and I say a little bit. So this is here a video. Yeah, so how I can keep up with the pace of the video and um, while I'm talking. Um, yeah, but this is like the fallback solution. Okay, so first of all, um, you, if you registered, if you booked Dynax Tent and you go the approach through the web uh, submit interface, well, first, first of all, you need to log in. Um, you also get the, the homepage where to log in. Then you type on your credentials, you log in. And yeah, then you will forward it to the. So this is basically the the interface, yeah. So here you can see all the jobs running, yeah. You have your username here, who you, which user is using which job, yeah. So basically this is the testing account. And then also you can just see the status of the job here, yeah. So it means this one here is uploaded. Um, so this one is queued running, yeah. And this one is a finished job. And I think, yeah, you can, oops, what I want to do, yeah. Yeah, I hope this will, ah, sorry, <laughs> that's not what I want to do. Okay, so you log in, yeah, you have some IDs, job IDs, and so on. You have your user IDs here, yeah, you can filter for user IDs, so what, is my, what are my job running jobs? You can see all the jobs are here finished, yeah. Yeah, you can see the job ID here, and um, uh, you can also define the filters or the like the, the columns by yourself. You can just uh, take some away, add some a few which you don't want to have to make it more um, <laughs> appealing to you or more condensed to what you actually want to know. Yeah, you can customize the filter, and you can even export this one um, as an Excel file. Yeah, to get an overview on the current view you have. Okay, so once so this is the overview. Okay, so how do you submit a job now? And this is done here. Okay, so again, here it's filtered. Now what you need to do is basically you just take your input deck. Uh, so in this case, you have this one here. You select both files and then you just drag and drop them up here. Uh, so you select both files, drag and drop them. They're going to be uploaded. Uh, you can see here, successfully uploaded. Then there will be a job created and then the job will be queued. And then you can, once the simulation is running, you can also able to somehow fetch some results. Yeah, for instance, you can pre preview a submit log, yeah, which is the locking of the submit files. You can uh, get intermediate results if the simulation is still running. So this is the submit log. Yeah, you can just track. Oh, 
Whoop, whoop. Oh, this was me. That's a little bit confusing. Yeah, so this is the submit log. Uh, you see how many, a lot of information um, regarding the machine or LS Dyna. So these are the LS Dyna messages. So everything with LS Dyna and output messages is, is producing will be entered in the submit log. Yeah, so if you have an error in your simulation, for instance, yeah, you can also check the submit log. You don't necessarily have to retrieve the message files. You can also submit log and see if the simulation is running. If it's not running, why it's not running, was an error on the simulation side, on your deck side, and so on. Yeah. So this job is reviewed. Yeah. It takes a while, then it will submit it. LS Dyna will be run on the machine. Oops. And then you can also retrieve results at the end of the simulation. Hopefully, also here. No. Ah, yeah, okay. I just wanted to show it here. Yeah. So when you're done, ah, this is a bit annoying with the video. Okay, here. Yeah, you can click on this one and then you can also select fetch results and then you can download the results. And that's it. Yeah, so it's fairly easy. Yeah, and like I said before, and you have these three approaches: um, virtual desktop, um, web submit, or the drag and drop. No matter which solution you are going for, you still have the possibility to log in to the web interface and then track the status of your job. Yeah, you can also, if you have a drag and drop solution, log into the interface and see if your job is running. What's the status of your job? Yeah. So tracking is fairly easy depending on the solution you're working with. Okay, so basically that's it um, for this webinar. And like I said, this was a different webinar today. And the thing is, as usual, we will put the video online on YouTube. Um, also, the slides you will find on our, on our webpage together with the example. And so once you're booking the Dyna Extend, um, you may use this as a first approach, yeah, how to get started. And um, yeah. So in general, um, Dynax 10 is a very flexible LS Dyna licensing approach. Yeah, was designed to be really, really fast with booking LS Dyna and the hardware. You can use different hardware vendors or hardware lease providers, hardware providers, so to say. Um, you can mostly have access to high performance computing centers and, and you have different access policy possibilities. Yeah, for instance, I showed here with the PLM cloud from T-Systems with a virtual desktop, the web interface, and the drag and drop folders on the local machine, which, in my opinion, I think is the most convenient and so far. Um, regarding prices, please refer to the web page and current actual prices. So like I said before, right now we have 5,000 euros for 128 cores for LS Dyna licenses and additional 2,500 for one month uh, in the PLM cloud and you're working on the Hawk machine. Yeah with these systems. If you're interested, go here, um, check out, you find some more information here. Um, also, you find the contact to my, my colleague, Kathleen. Feel free to contact her uh, if you have questions, if you want to book, if you want to have to test something. Yeah, feel free to contact. Um, yeah, with that being said, um, if you have any questions, I, I wait for a few more minutes, just post them in the chat. If not, um, feel free to contact us, contact Kathleen. Um, yeah, um, yeah. With that being said, I think I'm at the end of this talk. This was a fairly new, pretty short one, and not so technical as usual. I didn't want. And um, yeah, thank you for your attention. And if there are questions, yeah, just post them. If not, I wish everyone a happy, happy Friday, a good weekend and then see you soon for the next webinar in this series. Okay, bye-bye. So I'll wait a few more minutes if there's some questions popping up. If not, I stop the, uh, the meeting and see you later then. Bye-bye.